Well, thanks to you all for joining me once again and another very warm welcome back to the latest episode of Classic Dirt Bike TV where we explore more of those iconic race bikes uh, from our past. Now, this next featured machine uh, must be one of the most modern bikes that we've ever featured here on my channel. Now, this bike here is neither classic or vintage, but it does have a certain significance to the great uh, CCM dynasty, as it was the very last of the great uh, CCM motocrossers. Although just before we do take a look at this very rare example, let's have a quick run through some of those iconic CCM racers from the past that were so influential to the Clues Empire after almost 48 years of building off-road motocrossers. Now, as you're no doubt aware, CCM motorcycles all really started with this 1973 model, which was the very first actual at CCM off-road racer. Now, Alan Clues did build motorcycles prior to this 1973 bike, but they were called uh, Clues Strokers because at that point in 1972, Alan had yet registered the name Clues Competition Machines with Company's House. Then, of course, we had the 1974 bike, which was and still is a very popular CCM, which uh, even in this modern day is still being remanufactured by Joe Maxwell Engineering in Dumfries in Scotland. And uh, this particular bike here is uh, one of Joe's reproduction machines that's uh, owned and raced by Leslie uh, Calderwood. And also uh, another popular CCM model was this uh, easily recognisable 1975 bike. Now this fully restored example is a version of the bike that was raced by the legendary British rider uh, Vic Eastwood. But again, a very quick machine with that uh, superb B50 BSA motor and those uh, laid down shocks at the rear and of course that yellow uh, fiberglass uh, fuel tank. Now, this 1976 model was again very similar in appearance to the 74 bike with some uh, subtle changes and upgrades. But uh, when you take a long look at these 1970s CCMs, there's certainly something about them that looks just right with every part of the bike uh, functional and practical. Now, unfortunately, of uh, no pictures or video clips of a 1977 bike, but uh, this 1978 model uh, was again another fine example of Alan Clues's uh, workmanship. And these 78s, of course, had that lovely black alloy fuel tank and uh, the red seat with uh, those custom-made plastics for the side panels and front number plate. Now, of course, 1979 was when CCM began using the Italian Hiro motor in their chassis. And uh, this particular bike here was a 250 model that uh, actually sat in the CCM boardroom for many years before then being purchased by its new owner, uh, Colin uh, Lee. And although CCM were still building their iconic B50 engine bikes in 1980, they uh, once more were manufacturing these 250 CCM Hiro engine bikes in that same year. And this fully restored example is once more owned and raced uh, by classic rider and bike restorer uh, Colin Lee. But another superb example of uh, a CCM bike from 1980. And so our next example here is uh, one of those uh, 1980 B50 CCMs, which uh, now are sporting uh, the four-valve B50 engine with uh, CCM's own forks fitted uh, to the front. Piggyback white power shocks, of course, on the rear and that uh, iconic gold painted alloy fuel tank. But uh, yet another uh, gorgeous uh, looking clues machine. 
And next up we have another superb example once again of the 1981 bike. And uh, you can just imagine this uh, beautiful four-stroker lining up on the start line alongside the likes of the big 490 Michaels and 495 KTMs of their day. But uh, certainly make no mistake, these bikes were highly competitive against those big uh, two-strokers. Now, of course, throughout the 1980s and early 90s, CCM were still producing iconic and groundbreaking motorcycles, including this uh, Donny Schmidt at C25 at 600, and of course, this 1993 560 Rotax powered machine, which in their day were very quick and highly competitive uh, on the racetrack. Now, as you'd expect, we have uh, not got the time to list each and every single bike that CCM ever produced in this very short video, but uh, the examples that you're looking at here, including this uh, lovely pair of 92 560s, and of course, uh, this other pair of uh, C20 560s were just some of the fantastic race bikes that eventually led up to what was the absolute pinnacle of the Clues motocrossers, which brings us onto our subject, Clues Racer, which is a 2011 bike that's absolutely bristling with all of the very latest in high-tech materials and modern technologies. Now, these 2011 CCMs were uh, not exactly available to buy as a production bike, and these were only available as a factory racer for the CCM uh, team riders of their time. And as you'd expect, uh, very few of these bikes were actually made, although they did make a smaller 250 four-stroke and a bigger 450, which of course is the bike that we're looking at here. And so as we begin with the bike's chassis, now as I said, this new bike was absolutely brimming with the latest technologies of their day and this frame here was machined from pieces of billet alloy and it was actually made up of five separate pieces that were then bonded and bolted together using a car building technology taken from the British built Aston Martin motor cars. Although nonetheless, the workmanship and engineering on these new Clues frames was simply first class. And you can get a short glimpse here of the alloy machining on this part of the frame's headstock. Now, although on the face of it, it may sound a bit unorthodox to glue and bolt the motocross bike frame together, but these chassis were as strong, if not stronger, than the equivalent steel-built item and because these frames were made out of, out of alloy they were incredibly light and of course strong enough to withstand any kind of punishment that would have been handed out to them on even the bumpiest and roughest of race tracks. Now of course my uh, eagle-eyed uh, YouTube fans out there would uh, more than likely have already spotted that this motor here is neither the older B50 power plant or the later Rotax engine from the 1990s, but uh, this motor here is, of course, a Yamaha YZ454 stroke engine that's been slotted into this uh, custom made Clues uh, chassis. But once again, because these uh, YZ450s are factory built motors, uh, I didn't actually uh, get any information with regards the actual specs or the tuning that's been done to the engine, but I do think it's uh, pretty fair to say at this stage that uh, this won't be your average stock YZ450 power plant. And uh, what I have been told is that when these bikes were racing on the track in 2011, they did undergo some tuning by Rinaldi Racing. And you can certainly see here that uh, some work has taken place on the ignition side of the engine and uh, both the casing and that uh, custom made primary drive uh, sprocket guard has undergone the ceramic uh, Cerakote coating 
uh, put uh, onto the casings. Another nice uh, little touch here is this alloy sump guard for that uh, Yamaha motor that's had uh, the laser cut uh, CCM logo uh, carved uh, into it. But I'm sure that you don't need me to tell you about these fantastic YZ450 engines and just how good they are in a motocross bike and uh, that's probably why CCM then decided to use these 450 motors in their new bike because they were very powerful and they certainly pulled like the proverbial uh, train right through its entire uh, rev range. Although as I said this motor will almost certainly have had some nice exotic upgrades done to it so you can almost guarantee that it's going to be about twice as powerful as the stock version that you could buy from your Yamaha dealership in 2011. Now once more a custom made big bore exhaust for that Yamaha 450 motor and uh, more than likely uh, this will be manufactured in titanium and uh, the exhaust header pipe then of course leads on to this uh, quite substantial uh, tailpipe at the rear which again is probably uh, made of titanium with those uh, very nice looking carbon fibre retaining straps to secure it uh, to the chassis but if you do manage to hold on to the end of this video you'll certainly be able to see and hear this bike in action on the racetrack and there's a very nice grunt that comes from this tailpipe when we see the big CCM stretch its legs which we'll see uh, just shortly. Now as we move to the front end of our CCM bike we have a pair of uh, white power cone valve suspension units although uh, I'm not entirely sure of their actual diameter but as you can see they're definitely heavy duty and they do have uh, plenty scope for tuning and adjustment and uh, these forks here have been custom valved and set up by the highly respected uh, race connections uh, company. Now once more the front and rear hubs are a pair of uh, billet alloy CNC machine parts that have been laced onto those ACR Talon wheels uh, using of course uh, stainless steel spokes. Now as we move to the rear of the bike, now the bike's rear shock is again a white power tracks type unit which is uh, set up and custom valved and tuned by Race Connections and this was uh, all done to suit the specific rider and his personal riding style. Now once again and uh, as you'd expect more exotic materials were used in the construction of this custom made fuel tank and this carbon fibre fuel cell was both very strong and incredibly light and it certainly went a long way in helping reduce the overall weight of this latest CCM uh, race bike and you can understand why this carbon fibre material is so widely used in racing cars and motorcycles because of its strength and lightness of construction although as with all of these types of exotica these are not cheap to manufacture. Now once again and uh, as with almost all of these modern day motocrossers an almost flat type race seat so as the rider can uh, make full use of his mass to shift it around the machine so he can sit on the rear to make the front lighter or maybe throw his weight over the top of the tank just to help it uh, make sharper turns. Although with regards to the bike's rear swing arm I'm not exactly sure if uh, this was custom made for this bike or maybe even borrowed from another uh, make of motocrosser but uh, it's almost certainly made from alloy and could even be uh, taken from the likes of maybe a KTM or similar bike but uh, as I said I'm only guessing here because uh, I don't actually know uh, for certain. But we certainly have a top of the range hydraulic disc brake on our 
2011 CCM and this is a single pot uh, caliper at the rear with one of those uh, ultra modern style wavy discs uh, or rotors as you call them over there in the USA. Now uh, this rear brake here never really had any manufacturer's markings on it but uh, the front brake was uh, certainly a quality Nissan unit which of course are a very good choice as a braking system for any kind of off-road uh, motorcycle and this part here is a two-pot brake uh, caliper. More uh, quality parts again on our CCM with uh, these rental handlebars and their other associated fixings like those uh, red Venhill control cables but uh, there's certainly nothing cheap and tacky on this uh, particular bike because every part is uh, top quality and that uh, includes these uh, super sticky grips and those uh, brake and clutch levers with their adjusters and covers uh, which are all manufactured by uh, Sunline. Now once more an engine kill switch here just in case that you need to kill that big Yamaha motor in case uh, of an emergency. But as I said, this was the very last of the great CCM motocrossers and really it was the end of an era after almost 48 years of CCM bringing us uh, some of the most iconic four-stroke dirt bikes on the planet. Now naturally this bike here has a modern frame and a Japanese motor, although uh, this was just simply Alan Clues and CCM moving uh, with the times and you had to be very competitive on the track so you had to have the best materials and motors that were available and using the Yamaha engine was just uh, Alan Clues and CCM's way of uh, staying competitive. Although when you see just how far CCM has come from the old days of the very first 1973 bike with the old 500 BSA B50 motor uh, to this ultra tricked up 2011 rocket ship. It's uh, without doubt a legacy that Alan Clues and the gang at Clues Competition Machines should rightly uh, be proud of. And as I said, because these 2011 bikes were only supplied to the factory riders of their day, it's said that each machine cost around £30,000 to put uh, together. So they'd more than likely be outside anybody's meagre budget to try and purchase one uh, privately. But in this next picture here, we see the bike's uh, pilot, Joel Hughes on the left there, and the lucky owner of all of these featured CCM bikes. That's his father there, uh, Rob. Okay, just to finish off this video, let's take a quick look at Joel in action on this machine at the Westmoreland CCM Golden Jubilee event in 2021, with the racing commentary also taken from 2021. So this is the uh, uh, CCM bikes, uh, both uh, ancient and uh, modern. So you'll see a nice collection of uh, modern CCMs and uh, older CCMs in this race and it looks like uh, that could be uh, Joel Hughes who's made the early start on his uh, CCM bike number uh, 137 I think it is and it looks like Dougald uh, Cullen is in second position with another uh, quite uh, packed field of riders for uh, this uh, CCM twin shock and uh, monoshock but it's Joel Hughes, the man with the early lead. Now, this is a later uh, CCM bike, of course, not uh, with the BSA engine in it, of course, but uh, the Yamaha uh, four-stroke uh, motor in the chassis. Now, a few of the later uh, CCM bikes were powered uh, by uh, Rotax engines, and uh, a few were uh, powered by these uh, Yamaha four-stroke uh, motor so it's uh, number 581 who is in second place at the moment and that of course is Christian uh, Marshall who did uh, very well in a previous race on the uh, BSA that he was uh, riding but he's doing very well in second position here on the old uh, twin shock 
uh, CCM bike. Now, also in this uh, class, the organisers were allowing uh, Armstrongs and uh, JBR uh, Hondas to take part in these uh, CCM races, so you may catch a glimpse of uh, one or two of those bikes as they make their way around, but uh, Joel Hughes is absolutely flying on that uh, Yamaha-powered uh, CCM bike. Second place, Christian Marshall. Number three is uh, Dougald uh, Cullen with the ears on the helmet. At number 29 just making his way through there. That was, of course, Kier Tet, who was also riding uh, one of the more uh, modern uh, CCM machines. Now, this particular bike of uh, Joel Hughes could be uh, one of the many CCM bikes that uh, Rob Hughes had on display over the course of the weekend. It was uh, one of the biggest collection of uh, CCM bikes I've ever seen in one place and uh, I've already uh, made arrangements to go and visit uh, Rob's collection of CCM bikes so uh, look out for them all to be featured uh, here on my Classic Dirt Bike TV channel uh, sometime soon. So as uh, Joel Hughes crosses the line to begin another uh, racing lap uh, this bike again is uh, quite a rare machine with uh, I think it's a CCM built uh, frame with the uh, four-stroke uh, Yamaha YZF uh, engine in the chassis. As we take a look at Dugald uh, Cullen with the ears on the helmet and uh, his uh, CCM uh, powered bike with the road tax engine uh, in the chassis. But it was great to see all those uh, CCM bikes in the paddock on the Saturday and Sunday uh, in the Rob Hughes collection and uh, every conceivable uh, make and model of CCM bike uh, was more or less uh, included in that uh, collection. But we're looking at uh, Joel Hughes as he comes round to complete another lap. This has been an absolute stonking ride by uh, Joel on this uh, big CCM Yamaha bike. I remember seeing uh, Joel racing at this event a couple of years back, uh, riding a big uh, 510 Husk Varna four-stroke bike and he was absolutely awesome on that machine so as he crosses the line to start his last and uh, final lap he's uh, looking very uh, comfortable uh, for a race uh, win in this uh, CCM Twin Shock and uh, CCM uh, Monoshock uh, race. So we're back with our race leader as he heads towards the chequered flag. It's uh, going to be a win for uh, Joel Hughes on that uh, very quick uh, machine. This has been a good ride by uh, Joel. Uh, it led early on in the race and it's never really been troubled the entire uh, race since then. So as he comes to take the chequered flag, it's a win for uh, Joel Hughes. Well, I do hope you enjoyed looking at that uh, 2011 CCM and I do hope that you'll all tune in again sometime soon to see more uh, of these motocross machines right here on your number one and favourite classic dirt bike TV channel. <laughs>